Start your day with remembrance of us. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers and listeners of Madani channel, start your day with the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ji haan, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our provider, sustainer, cherisher and nourisher. We send peace and blessings upon Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his illustrious family and noble companions alayhi muridwan. Marhaba once again. Ahlan wa sahlan bikum to all our viewers. And I should say I am in the company of our respected and honorable guest for this morning who is none other than respected honorable Mawlana Noshad At-Tari sallamahu al-bari. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And we shall move towards our discussion inshallah azza wa jalla as he is with us. Our discussion for today dear viewers is adopt the beautiful quality of politeness. Inshallah azza wa jalla how should one become polite? How should one adopt this quality and characteristic how should one behave in situations where he is put into a situation where he has to, uh, he is upset, he has lost his temper, or he is about to cause a problem for himself or for others? During such a situation, how should one come out of it? And how can one follow uh, the sunnah and the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Dear viewers of Madani channel, this is a very, very, very uh, important discussion, should I say, for it has to deal and do with almost every person's life. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So though we know it is an important quality that we should have, so what can we say about this? What are the ayat of the Holy Quran, Ipaq, yani the verses in the Quran and the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the life of the pious predecessors, yani the sahaba alayhi muridwan, uh, and the awliya and salihin, the friends of Allah azawajalla is all before us, inshallah, we are going to extract lessons from their lifestyle and we are going to try and implement because this is character building, inshallah azawajalla. This is what we call character building. This is what we call rectifying ourselves and the people of the entire world. This is the aim inshallah. and objective of your da'wat islami. This is the slogan which we make at the end of every program. I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Be with us till the end of the program and learn more about it. Let's commence with this beautiful narration with regards to the Rood and Salat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the peace of our hearts and mind the most generous and kind sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stated in a hadith the person who recites 50 times the Rood upon me I shall shake hands with him on the day of judgment. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So form the habit of reciting the Rood and Salat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now without any further delay, let us welcome our uh, senior personality in our program who needs no introduction, Mawlana Hafiz Noshad At-Tari sallamahu al-Bari. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Mawasab, how is the day treating you? Alhamdulillah, we have a very beautiful day here in Sunnyside. Sufi Nagar in Durban, South Africa, mashallah. And, uh, you know, this is one of those topics that uh, we all should listen very attentively to. Gee. Because this applies to each and every one of us. And as you rightfully said, this is about also character building, politeness. And this is one of the things that we teach in our Madrasatul Madinas, Jamiatul Madinas. So not just teaching knowledge of deen, but also giving training to the students whether males or females, that uh, to become a good Muslim, practicing Muslim, upright member of society. And politeness is part and parcel of that. It shows a person's mannerism, a person's character, a person's uh, akhlaq as well. Alhamdulillah, we have too many role models to teach us and to show us 
how to develop our character, how to develop this beautiful concept and quality of politeness as well. Yeah, but, Alhamdulillah. 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 We make dua, Mu'asab, that by the end of today's program, uh, inshallah, we are uh, blessed with this quality, Mu'asab, inshallah, inshallah, to increase and enhance <coughs> this if we do have it. And for those who know that I need this, inshallah, work towards this quality. Yani, make dua for it and read the mm. seerah of the Holy Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa Why we say this, Mu'asab, as we mm. just mentioned very beautifully, that there are so many role models out there. Yeah. Lakin, there is one role model Mu'asab which the Qur'an has guided us to and that is none other, none other than our universal Nabi, yani your Nabi, our Nabi, Janabi Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the Qur'an has, uh, you know, commented on his blessed character Mu'asab, the Qur'an mm. has praised his character. Uh -huh. yani how great and how excellent mm. and what a lofty station mm. our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam holds Mawlana Sahib for Allah Azza he himself, yani the creator mm. praises his beloved mm -hmm. Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And not one place Mu'asab, there are many ayat and verses in the Holy yeah. Quran Ipak. At one place he Azza wa says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa innaka la'ala khuluqin awim. Allahu Akbar. Yani, Mu'asab, at this place here, once again, Allah Azza wa Jalla, uh, in this verse, praises uh, the outstanding characteristics. Mm, yani, mm. character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Go through the translation from Kanzul Iman Sharif. Mm. Go through the tafsir of Siratul Jinan mm -hmm. and, and study and learn, subhanallah, how beautifully Allah Azza wa Jalla expresses, uh, yani, uh, jiha praises the characteristics uh, and akhlaq of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, Asab, it's surprising that even uh, today where there's abundant uh, information ready at the, the touch of your fingertips. Mm. But still, Muslims, or many of them out there, are still looking for somebody that who, or who can I imitate and emulate in my life? Aye, aye. Because now they want, everybody wants success. So what is the concept of your success? And how do you achieve, how do you attain success? So they're looking for you know, maybe a business role model or somebody who's a, a good... Uh, uh, parent figure, something like this, they're looking for it, or they're searching for it, and we have the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa whom Allah azza wa jal guides us towards. Subhanallah. And for this reason, Mu'asab, he says, for this reason, he says, Bu'istu li utammima makarim al-akhlaq. Yani, I have been sent for the completion of good mannerism. It is because of Rasulullah sallallahu we have everything, but this blessing or this politeness which we really admire when you see somebody who got politeness, it is through the sadqah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mu'asab, time is always of the essence and we always fight for time. Can Mu'asab, you know, present any example from his blessed life? Yes, there are so many examples, Mu'asab, but such example which demonstrates or speaks about his politeness, Mu'asab. Okay, I'm going to mention this narration, but I want the viewers and listeners out there to listen carefully and to derive a lesson from this. Hmm. That from today, inshallah, you know, I'm going to work on building my character. I'm going to work on my politeness as well. Because politeness, if you are polite with people, automatically, uh, under general circumstances, they will be polite to you. Yeah. If a person is polite to others, you develop a very healthy relationship, whether it's with your spouse or your parents or your yeah. children or your siblings yeah. or the general masses out there. Nobody wants to be around a rude person. Mm. Nobody wants to be around a person who, you know, engages in obscenities and vulgarities. Okay, you'll get a section of society where they, they enjoy listening to all the filth, right? That, um, besides those people there. Otherwise, nobody wants to be around a person who's always grumpy and sour. Right. Somebody who's smiling, somebody who's polite, somebody whose mannerism is, is refined. Yeah, and this is what our deen teaches us. So, subhanAllah, one day Sayyiduna Zaid bin Sa'ana radiallahu an, hmm. Sahabi Rasul, hmm. but at one stage he was a great scholar of the Torah. Achha. Before accepting Islam. Achha. So he, he buys some dates, some kajur from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa mm. And uh, so there's a few days left for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the last Prophet of Allah, to give him those kajur mm. upon the agreed date. Mm. But he comes a few days before. Achha. He approaches the court of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And in front of a large gathering, mm. he starts to demand for his kajur. Mm. There's few days left for him to receive it, mm. but he comes a few days before and he starts demanding in front of a large gathering aye, of aye, people. Aye, aye. And he is, you know, very harsh in his words. He's abrupt. He's staring at the Prophet ﷺ with rage, with anger. And he's pulling at the shawl, the blessed shawl of Nabi ﷺ, his blessed qameez, he's pulling at it. Where's my kajur? Where's my dates? Abruptly. Mm. Mm. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh, second khalifa of Islam, he's standing there. He says, oh enemy of Allah Azza wa Jal, what is wrong with you? 
How are you talking like this to Allahu Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? If Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not here, I would have finished you. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. That's Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. <laughs> and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the final prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says that, Oh Umar, what are you saying? <laughs> You're supposed to be encouraging me to give what is due to him. <laughs> You're supposed to be encouraging him to <laughs> ask <laughs> for it in a polite manner. Subhanallah. In this way, you'll be benefiting him and myself as well. Allah. <laughs> this is the humbleness of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nevertheless, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Umar, an, give him, go and give him his kajur, his dates, and give him a little bit extra. He proceeds and he goes to Sayyidina Zayd bin Sa'ada radiallahu an, gives him his kajur and more. So Zayd bin Sa'ana radiallahu anhu says, Oh Umar, why did you give me more than what is due to me? He says, No, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that uh, because I was staring at you and I made you frightened from what I was saying. So to make you happy and pleased, I'm giving you extra. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Subhanallah. So Zayd bin Sa'ana asked Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, Do you know who I am? He said, I'm Zayd bin Sa'ana. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu replied that, Are you the same Zayd bin Sa'ana who is a great scholar of the Torah? He said, Yes. Then how did you talk so disrespectfully to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How you were doing those things? Hmm. Zaid bin Sa'ana radiallahu anhu said, Actually, O oh Umar, the thing is this. I read all the qualities of the last Prophet of Allah in the Torah. And I found all of those qualities in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Besides two signs. Achha. And I, I decided to test him to see if these signs are also hmm. there. Hmm. One sign is that, his politeness will always be dominant. Hmm. And if he's faced with rudeness and evilness, his politeness will increase. Kya baat Subhanallah. So I tested him. And these two signs are also found in Rasulullah sallallahu sallallahu wa sallam. So I bear witness that he is indeed the last prophet of Allah. Kya baat he then goes to the court of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and accepts Islam on the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So our ulama, our, our mashayikh have uh, cautioned us that if you are polite to people, you can change their lives. Mm -hmm. If you are polite to them, you can bring them closer to the deen. In particular, not just muballighin and muballighat, but every Muslim out there. Mm -hmm. Because in many instances in the history of Islam, in the history of the world, people became Muslims because of the good character of the Muslims. Mm -hmm. People became Muslims because of the politeness of, of Muslims. So imagine if a person is out there and forcing people to do things that they don't want to do or swearing them, scolding them, screaming at them. You don't want to be around that person. You don't want to be around a person who is negative. Mm. So we are taught even in psychology as well. If you want to develop a good rapport and relationship with an individual, politeness is one of the key qualities that can help you to influence them towards goodness. Because if you're always negative and you're talking negative and you, you sour and you know, nobody wants to be around that individual because that will rub off into them. Mm. It will give them a negative mind as well. Mm. But our deen, our Islam, our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa our Sahaba, Ahlul Bayt, Awliya Allah, all these pious predecessors, they teach us through their character, through their words also. There was a person who came to one of the Sahaba Ikram and uh, said that you know, um, I know that you commit these sins. In, in front of other people, he's saying this. Yeah. What's the reaction? Mm. What would be my reaction? If somebody mm. came, I'm sitting with my friends or family or others and says, hey, you're a great sinner, you do this and you do that. Mm. I'll get angry, I'll get upset. Especially if I don't do those Allah. things. You know, I'll roll up my sleeves and get ready. But what is the reaction of that Sahabi? That Sahabi said that you are aware of that sin. Allah has covered my other sins which you are not aware of. So this is the reaction. Allah. You know, not, not scolding, not, Allah, not shouting Allah, back, Allah, not Allah, swearing Allah. back vulgarism, obscenities, no. But understanding that, you know what, as a Muslim, I have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. I can either bring that person close or chase that person away. Mm -hmm. And that person is not only one person. That's a nasal we're talking about. Behind mm -hmm. that person is a family. So either you can bring that person and the family close towards the deen, or you can chase him and his Allah. family away from the deen. So, most of, you know, all these examples that you have given so beautifully from the waqiyah of Hazrat Sayyidina Zaid radiallahu an. Radiyallahu. We learned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa forgiven him despite his insulting wasab, despite his uh, harsh words mm, mm, mm. for the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at how Nabi Pak forgave him, mm. forgiven him. And this is what I'm saying, Mawasab, that forbearance actually gives birth to tolerance. Yes, yes. If a person learns to forgive, then tolerance is that you can still take revenge, but you still forgive. Mm -hmm. Though you can take revenge and you forgive. Mm -hmm. So you forgave, that is your forbearance, that you can forbear people, you have this in you, that mashallah, you can forgive people. Fine, mashallah, 
but tolerance is then higher than that for muasab. Yes. You can take revenge from the person, but you still forgive. Mm -hmm. Allahu Akbar. And this is the andaz and the style of the master of both worlds, Mu'asab. Therefore, uh, you know, um, Sayyidi Ala Hadrat Imam Ahmad Rida Khan, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, ta in his poetry, Jee. he says so beautifully, Sab se ala ala hamara nabi sab se ba Mm. We have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as our role model. He is our master. He is our intercessor. Mm -hmm. He is the reason for the existence of this planet and universe. And mm -hmm. dear viewers of Madani channel, look at his andaz of adopting politeness when he would speak to people. Not once. Throughout his blessed life, before the announcement of prophethood and even after the announcement Allah. of prophethood, until his last very breath mm. in this physical world, dear viewers, before he made parada from this dunya, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adopted politeness throughout mm. his blessed life and he changed the hearts of thousands of companions through his politeness, through his blessed Mashallah, smile, Mashallah. through his Mubarak andaz, through his akhlaq -e mubaraka So many uncountable people, Mu'asab, came into the folds of Islam due to his andaz and style. So, Wh whoever came in contact with him, they, 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 were, they were mesmerized by ay, his ay, politeness. Ay, ay, ay. They were mesmerized by his akhlaq and his character. <laughs> you know, Alhamdulillah, Zawajal, one of the great benefits, and, yeah. and this is especially yeah. to parents out there, yeah even grandparents. Mm -hmm. the, one of the great benefits that you will have in applying the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam in your life, mm -hmm. in emulating him who is the best of creation, in imitating him is that your offspring will witness this, your offspring will see this, especially little kids because they are copy and paste. You know, like they are like blank sheets. Whatever you write in them, that's what's going to be registered in their mind. Mashallah. Imagine now if you are eating according to sunnah, they're looking at this. They don't understand or most things they don't understand. Yeah. But things yeah, are getting into their mind, into their into memory. Their mind, they're yes. looking, they're listening. And you know, eventually they start copying these things. Mm. My mother, my father is, you know, sneezing and saying, Alhamdulillah. So they start practicing upon this. My mother and father, they are talking, you know, with nice words, with, you mm. know, polite words and with the very gentle words, not screaming and shouting and, you know, vulgarism and swear words and mm. what have you. So they start, they, they pick up on these things, right? And then in between you also, this is part of the training that they receive. This is an indirect training where you don't even tell them anything, but just, by you just, you know, practicing sunnah, they are, they are looking and they are listening. And they start to emulate because they don't know how to do things. Yeah, but, yeah, Kids that are growing up small, you know, infants especially, they don't know how to do or what to do or how to do it. But they are looking at their parents and their grandparents or they're doing it like this. So they start to emulate it. So this is one of the great benefits that if we apply this, the sunnah and, and you know, the, the beautiful characteristics of the Prophet Sallallahu in speech, in word, in deed as well. And oh. even how we think. I mean, we are looking for people out there that, you know what, this is a person who is successful. True success is if a person leaves this world with Iman, that is success, Huzur. If a person can, can have all the worldly success in the world, but if he left without Iman, oh. what success he got? What profit he got? What benefit he got? Nothing. It was all of the investments that he made in this world, all of the influence that he had in this dunya, it will end once he ends, once his life ends. But in the hereafter, in the qabr and hereafter, that's where we will see who was truly successful, mm. who really has that high status in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm. So I must, my aim must be this, that I must strive to reform myself. That's where I'm going to start. And this is what Dawud Sami teaches us. Mashallah. Start with yourself and then with your family and then your community as well. That's how it starts, Mohsab, and yes, that's how it yourself. ends. So yes, dear viewers, as our Mawlana Sahib, mashallah, has given us these Madani pearls, it's for our reformation. So 
So just focus on this. Whether you're a ruler, the any, you know, Masab, every person that's in charge is going to be questioned to his subject, yeah. right? So True. if Allah Azawajal has given you power, if you're a husband, if you're a father, if you're an employer, if you're a boss of the company, for example, Masab, you know, whatever relationship you have, as long as you are in a relationship, you will be questioned about it. So mm. if you are a person who cannot bring your anger into your own control and rather you let your anger take control of you yourself, Jee. You are in a danger zone. I mean, look at the Allah Azza wa Jal, our Creator. Look at our Creator, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, guiding His Kalim. Yani, Hazrat Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Alayhi salam. Yeah. His Prophet. Yeah. Allah Azza wa Jal guides Musa alayhi salatu wasalam in Surah Taha in these words. He Azza wa Jal says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيِّنَ لَعِلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى Translation from Karan Zuliman Sharif Mohasab. So speak to him gently in hope that he may reflect or have some fear. Allah Akbar. Speak to who Mohasab? Fir'aun. Fir'aun who claimed to be a khudaf. Fir'aun who caused so much of chaos on this earth, Mu'asab. Fir'aun who caused so much of trouble to the Nabi and Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jalla, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. Despite all of that, Allah Azza wa Jalla is commanding his Prophet, speak to him with politeness. Your daughter, your son, your husband, or your wife, your children, your siblings, your sisters, your brothers, your friends and families, whoever you want to rectify, you have an issue to sort out mm. with your employer, with the employee, whoever the person is. Yeah. Remember, the only solution wants up to solve any problem is with politeness. Yes. It's if true. the person opposite you is speaking harshly, he's swearing in return, have sabr. Mm. This is what Rasulullah did Sabah and he changed Allah. people through sabr. Yes, absolutely. Up, look at how Allah despite Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, making so much of mischief, Allah. looks at him with mercy. Jee. He claims to be God, but yet Allah, Allah looks at him with mercy or sends his Nabi towards him with mercy that don't be harsh so that he can accept Islam. Mm. So mm. what about the person who regards Allah as creator? Of Allah. What about the one who believes in the oneness of Allah? Jee. Jee. So why wouldn't Allah shower his rahmah and his mercy upon the one who believes in the oneness mm. of Allah? Mm. For the one who did not believe, yet Allah dealt with him with politeness. And he sent his prophet to him with politeness. Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Subhanallah. No matter how bad a person's character is, no matter how far they are away from the, the deen of Islam, the sunnah of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the teachings of Quran, as long as you are alive, you know, there's always a chance. There's always a way back. If, if I may just continue on that narration, Uzur, it's mentioned also in the tafsir and the commentary that what a deal Fir'aun had, but he blew it, Uzur. That Allah Azawajal had mentioned to Musa Alayhi Salaam to tell him that you will stay young forever. Hai, 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 Until hai. you die, you'll Until stay you die. young. You Allah won't, you won't Allah grow Allah old. Allah you'll always remain king. Just <laughs> leave this you know, notion Allah. that you are God and people must worship you and worship Allah Azawajal. So khana, peena, food, drinks, oh, luxuries, whatever he has will be with him. Will be with him and he'll always remain Allahu young. Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So he, firstly he was thinking, he was impressed with this, you know. Mm. And he said, okay, uh, I can only make a decision when my minister Haman comes. Mm. And you see, this is also now, Haman now came and said, what are you talking about? You are a god, na'uz billah. People are worshipping you. Why you want to worship somebody else? And then Fir'aun, he agreed to that and he didn't accept Iman. Mm. I imagine this is the effect of bad company. Mm. Bad company can destroy you, can destroy your character, Huzur. Allah really. Akbar. If you are sitting with a bunch of people who are alcoholics, if you're sitting with uh, uh, drug addicts, you're going to end up doing that. Even if you don't, for, if you're very lucky and you don't, somebody sees you that, hey, this guy sits with the alcoholics in the bar. Mm. This guy goes to the clubs and the pubs. This is the guy that sits with the drug dealers and drug addicts. They, want to do, they don't want to do anything with you then. Aye, because aye, you're aye, damaging aye. your own character. character. You're damaging your own, you, you are removing that politeness and that goodness from you by hanging around with the filth, the, the dregs, what they call the dregs mm. of society. Mm. 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 So, Haman, because of his influence, this is what happened to Fir'aun. He died without Iman, no possibility of Jannah. Today, who am I sitting with? Who's my friend's circle, my circle of friends? That's the thing we need to ask ourselves. From that, I can determine where we, what kind of station I will be in uh, 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 on the Day of Judgment. <laughs> because a person will be raised with those whom he loves. Who do I love? Allah. Do I love Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa Do I love Sahaba Ikram, Ahlul Bayt and Awliya Allah? Or do I love those who are going to the 
pubs and clubs and drugs and cinemas and you know uh, doing all these filthy things astaghfirullah I have an idea may Allah, Allah forgive us Muasab may Allah grant us tawfiq to repent from all our sins Allah. major or minor Amen. but Muasab since you spoke about the cycle of friends <laughs> I shall just mention the saying and teaching of Sayyidina Bishr al-Hafi rahmatullahi ta'ala Ali whose blessed shrine and mazari mubarak is in Iraq in Baghdad, Mu'alla. What a beautiful, oh, beautiful Rouhani Mazar of Bishar Hafi Rahmatullah Ali. Aap farmate hain, what he says, he says, find good friends for yourself. Allahu Akbar. Find good friends for yourself. When you come across a friend who supports you in matters of the hereafter, strengthen your friendship with him. Mm, mm, mm. When you find him, that he is guiding you in matters related to the hereafter, mm, mm. he says then, Strengthen your bond with him because he Allah is Allah. the friend that you need. Allahu Akbar. May Allah Zawadullah grant us good friends. Mu'asab, an example from the life of Amir al-Sunnat, if you could give Mu'asab with regards to the early days of sabr and patience. Amir al-Sunnat, Dhamad Barakatumul Aliyah. MashaAllah, may Allah Zawadullah extend his shadow above our heads. Amen. And he is our guiding light and lamp, MashaAllah. When he uh, was on his way preaching Islam and how many difficulties he went through Mu'asab. Through mm. every part of his life he demonstrated mm. politeness. Aaj mm. Dao Islami kaha hai Mu'asab? Ye sara ka sara to Amir Ahle Sunnat Damat for Yuzum hi ka to barkate hai. MashaAllah through Nigrani Shura, through Arakine Shura, through their efforts and hard works of the Muballiks, MashaAllah, who have been pushed by the seniors and MashaAllah, who have been trained by the seniors. Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah Zawajallah for such a fragrant and beautiful movement of Quran and Sunnah. Allah karam aisa kare tuch pe jaha mein Hey, Dawat Islami, Tiri Dhum Machi Ho. May Allah Zawajallah grant more success to this fragrant movement of Quran and Sunnah. And for you to continue supporting this movement, dear viewers of Madani Channel. So, Ji Mu'asab, uh, from the life of Amir Aswad. Very itself. quickly, there was an incident where um, uh, a person comes to Amir al Sunnah Damud Barakatum al Aliya mm. and he's a zamadar, a responsible person, Imam al Sharif, Dari Sharif, everything. And he says, Bapa uh, Jan, do you remember me? Mm. He says, uh, you know, explain to me. He says, long time ago, mm. I was a youngster standing mm. out of, uh, standing outside the masjid. Mm. And I saw you coming, you were walking and coming. And to play a, a trick or joke on you, I asked you that, um, that I want to take you to the cinema to watch a movie. Mm. Na'uzu billah. So Amir al-Sunnah said that that time um, that, you know, I don't watch movies. Then he's inviting Bapa Jan, Amir to, to watch a movie Allah at the Allah cinemas. Allah. So uh, Bapa Jan, Amir al-Sunnah, Damal Barakatum Aliya says, I don't watch movies, but since you gave me an invitation, I'm giving you an invitation. Aye, 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 aye. Come, I invite you towards our Sunnah inspired <laughs> Ijtima. Subhanallah. So it's, it's a long story, but Alhamdulillah, yeah. he attended and he got so inspired by that. He stayed in the environment of, of Dawud Islami and then he tells Bapa Jan in the present era that that same youngster was myself. Mm. But today, mashallah, because of your blessings and your invitation to the Sunnah inspired Ijtima, I have left all, all of those bad actions. And today, I have hai, grown hai. the sunnah of the beard Allah, and I have Imam Allah, Sharif Allah. and I'm doing deeni kaam as well, subhanallah. Mm, mm, mm. So politeness. Amir Usul said, you know who I am? I'm Ali Madin and you know, no, and the Murids could have, no, rather, you know, I don't do that. They come, I invite you for this. Mm. Yeah. Politeness, you can change people's lives, Uzur. Really, you can change people's lives. And you many, know? and many more colleagues who follow this style of Amir Ahl Sunnah, Mu'asab, Mm. They also encountered such situations yes, and they yes. immediately adopted the same style of Amir al Sunnat. And the, yeah. the result and the outcome of mm. that was that those people also entered uh, and came into the mahol and environment yeah. of Da'wat Islam, subhanAllah, and became muballiks of the Copying good is good itself. That is the most effective way of approaching yeah. people. <laughs> Politeness, <laughs> kind words, that helps people. Jazakallah, well. Mu'asa, for Amin. this amazing yeah. time that you spent uh, with Amin. us, Mu'asa, for accepting this invitation and being here. Amin. Um, on this program, uh, exactly. the early echo, and for all the viewers out there who have watched today's program, may Allah bless you. Let's leave, mm -hmm. let's end on this note that we need this quality of, of politeness. Handle matters. When you are to make a decision, do not make a drastic decision in the state of anger. There are places when you should be angry. There are places when you should not be angry. There are times when you should be angry. We will have another discussion on this, dear viewers of Madani Channel, uh, at another time, inshallah. For now, we have come to the end of the program and we want to end on this note that this is the fragrant movement of Quran and Sunnah which has reformed many, many brothers, many, many brothers out there throughout the globe uh, attend our ijtima'at of Da'wat Islami, Sunnah-inspired programs and you shall attain lots of blessings, dear viewers. 
Alhamdulillah. We shall be back with another episode, same time, same place, only on your Madani channel. We thank our respected Mohsa once again for joining us. Barakallah. And we request our viewers out there to make dua for the Ummah at large. Until tomorrow, stay good, be good, do good, and wherever you are, kindly remember, I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. إن شاء الله عز وجل صلوا على الحبيب صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم.